The consumer getting beat up today as rising interest rates loom over the market. But the question then becomes, is the selling overdone? Let's bring in Katie Stockton of Fairlead Strategies on whether she sees more pain ahead. Katie, welcome. Higher interest rates also weighing uh, on home builders among not just con consumer companies, uh, but, but take us through your argument here on consumer stocks, consumer discretionary. Well, really, just today, we downgraded the sector in relative terms versus the S&P 500 to underweight. And we did that because we have breakdowns. So breakdown in, for one example, the ratio of the consumer discretionary spider to the S&P 500, that took out its 200-day moving average. We also have a breakdown in XLY itself. So we want to be really mindful of that loss of momentum and relative strength behind the space and, and respect that and reduce exposure in following, noting that next support levels are pretty well below. Amazon is probably the best example and really one of the biggest drags of late on the XLY and consumer discretionary sector more broadly. Amazon has a pretty major breakdown on its chart. If you look at something called the cloud model, it sounds kind of fancy, but it's just a gauge of support and resistance. And that support level was taken out for the first time since 2015. And it does increase risk of a deeper corrective phase. It doesn't mean it has to happen tomorrow or next week, but it does support downside follow through there. And as you mentioned, also the home builders have been under pressure. We do think yields will work their way higher with a targeted level of about 213 based on the breakout that seems to be underway. The home builders are reacting with a pullback and that pullback reflects a loss of momentum. If you look at an ETF like ITB, it's really the first, we call it a MACD sell signal. So the histogram has fallen into negative territory pretty deeply, and that reflects a meaningful loss of intermediate term momentum, albeit still within the long term uptrend. Why is this happening, Katie? What, what, what is your hunch? I mean, it's a, a very real shift in market sentiment and, and probably not accidentally related to the start of a new year. Uh, the major indices are really under pressure, and that's coming alongside weakness from the mega caps. If the mega caps like Apple falling below its 50-day moving average today, that, that makes it very hard for the major indices to work higher. So you get a little bit of that fear instilled in the marketplace, and folks are less willing to hold on to their winners. They want to sort right. of penalize those winners by taking some profits. All right, Katie, thanks very much. Katie Stockton of Fairlead uh, Strategies, founder, uh, with us tonight. Appreciate it. Let's trade this one, uh, Karen. If we, uh, I thought the consumer was in pretty good shape. I thought balance sheets were good, jobs are good. Um, they've got more wealth, their houses are worth more, their 401ks are worth more. Why wouldn't consumer stocks be holding up a little mm -hmm. better? Well, I think there, it's not a monolith of consumer stocks. Some are, some aren't. But she brings up some really important points about whether this home building and home buying spree is over. And there's sort of, I think, of three different tranches of there's the home builders, which trade at much lower multiples and have done very well. And there's sort of home builder retailers, which I own, like a Home Depot and a Lowe's, and it could be things like Sherwood Williams. And then there's sort of the things that feed into that like a name like William Sonoma or Restoration Hardware that um, Tim pointed out on our afternoon call that have just really gotten massacred. And I get why, but I do think there's still value there. And I agree with you. I, I feel that the consumer's in decent shape. I know we'll get to it later on Bank of America, but Brian Moynihan thinks the consumer's in good shape. So I think parts of this are overdone. Tim, what do you think? Well, you know, go, go to the earnings we heard today, Procter & Gamble, Fast and Al, um, it, you know, they're talking about the, the labor and inflation pressures across the board and where they're passing it on. In fact, they both were kind of almost, uh, you know, pretty, pretty cocky that they're passing it on, I thought. Um, but I, you know, you look at, look at a Nike, look at a Lululemon, look at a Starbucks, uh, you know, again, and Katie pointed out some of the charts and the breakdowns and why you have to respect those charts. And, and, and again, those, those three stocks are as oversold um, as they've been on an RSI basis, which is again, a, a, a limited look at, at short-term momentum. But again, we haven't seen this kind of velocity of down moves in these stocks. Starbucks down 17% in the last 11 sessions. And meanwhile, um, the numbers we got on December uh, in terms of comps and, and reacceleration is that uh, they were up probably 10 to 15 percent. Um, I think with Nike, we know that story there. With Lululemon, this is a story that now at this point, you know, after you've pulled the stock back, it's it's trading somewhere around. You know, it's gonna. This is gonna do you know, 
10, 10, 50 a share, depending on who you ask. So we're trading inside of 30, probably 27 times 2023. I think you've gotten to a place where you've had major corrections. And, and I think the biggest issues for these companies to me are on margin. Um, what are they doing with labor? What are they doing with input costs? And I think that's what has the market concerned.